now you see them. Now you don't. Here's your look at the NECA Toys Universal Monsters, the ultimate invisible man. For the 90th anniversary of Universal's sci-fi horror film classic, NECA is excited to reveal The Invisible Man in ultimate action figure form. Starring Claude Rains, the 1933's The Invisible Man was based on the classic H.G. Wells novel and received critical acclaim, eventually being placed on the U.S. National Film Registry in its historical significance. The interchangeable heads capture the seemingly solid rat version, as well as partially uncovered versions that peaks the insane emptiness within. Also included are interchangeable wrapped and gloved hands, goggles, nose, notebook, wig, and a cup with straw. Just before anything on this figure starts to fade, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the Universal Monsters Invisible Man stands. And I will in a second be bringing in also the other Universal Monster figures that the folks over at NECA Toys have made in the past. Invisible Man, though, stands, as you can see, about 7 inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 18 centimeters tall. Not necessarily in a particular order, but let's bring in some of the other Universal Monster figures we've gotten from the folks over at NECA Toys, starting first with Bella Lugosi's Dracula. Then off to the side, we can also bring in the colorized version, though, of the Frankenstein's monster. One thing you'll probably still be noticing as we bring in the rest of these figures is the fact that they're all going to be colorized versions, because, of course, we don't have ourselves a black and white version yet of the Invisible Man. By the way, there is the Bride of Frankenstein. Off to the side, there's the Wolfman. Ho! And then just off to the other side again, we're filling up a lot of space real fast. There's the Gill Man from the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Can you still, can you see him? We'll just move him over. Obviously, he's the tallest of the batch. We also had a look at the Mummy. And the most recent, I think, in fact, we had a look at was the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, one little course correction I did want to make to the Phantom of the Opera's review was the fact I did mention that he had a cane. We all know that's, in fact, actually a snorkel. I don't know really why, why I actually called it a cane in the review. But you can see there's quite a lot of characters that we've gotten so far. And that pretty much covers most, if not all, the territory. There's still Quasimodo. I don't know if many would consider that to be a true universal monster figure. But that's only the one other figure I can think of that Neck could still deliver us. As for the figure's accessories, Invisible Man does quite good for himself. First, the figure comes in clear with the smallest of accessories, one that fell on the floor the moment I was taking everything out of the tray. I literally have his nose. The nose itself was loose, and it was just happened to be next to the beaker that had the straw, and as I was taking out the beaker, the nose took a tumble. And luckily, when it did take a tumble, I just happened to catch it with the corner of my eye, and I, and I was able to retrieve it. If you don't happen to retrieve the nose that comes with your Invisible Man, you'll be happy to know as well. The folks over at Naked Toys includes another two noses that you can have displayed. We really don't have necessarily a table. I hope at some point we do get ourselves, as we've gotten already, with the Dracula accessory set, the Frankenstein, and the Mummy's accessory set. I hope we actually get ourselves like a little lab table that comes and could come included for the Invisible Man, because I'm sure then there'll be a place to put these noses. As it is right now, other than just having two bags in the nose, to nose in the bag as you can see there's really no other place to store these right now what i might just ultimately do is open up the bag as it's already open right now and put the third nose in there and seal it up shut so i'm not going to be losing it anywhere what could possibly be lost as well is that the figure comes included with a with a toupee or hair piece uh, from a distance it actually kind of looks more like a crow ah! but in fact it is a hair piece again we don't really have a place to store any of these things yet I'm going to see if I can actually find myself a serviceable enough figure-sized table where I can actually put all the things on there until eventually we get ourselves, I hope at least, a table to go for the Invisible Man. Those are the smaller of the accessories as we work our way up a little bit bigger. The figure also comes in clear with his beaker. The beaker does have the straw. The straw, unfortunately, is a little bit bent. Be careful, of course, taking this out, not only for the risk of losing the nose that's right next to it, but also just because this is a very thin plastic and the straw seems very, very likely to be bent. As you can already see with mine, mine is a little on the war more warped side. He does have a gripping hand, at least to hold the beaker. Uh, that's one of the next things we're going to be having a look at. The figure also comes included with his journal book, making sure, of course, I've got it flipped around the right way. You wouldn't be able to replicate the formula that you made simply just because we're only getting two pages and there's no real means to flip the pages as it's just a molded book. It's a nice journal, though. Again, I hope, again, we can find something to put this onto, but a nice little book nonetheless. The figure also comes in clear with a pair of goggles. 
Now, you'll notice right now the figure already has goggles on the existing head that he has. Uh, however, though, the figure also comes in clue with two alternate heads. One that is actually just, uh, as you can see, visible eyes or open eye sockets and open nose cavity and a little opening for his mouth. And then there's this one that kind of looks like either Terrence or Philip from South Park. Hey, Terrence! Anybody remember South Park? I hope everybody's still watching South Park. It's been actually a while since I've seen an episode of South Park. Kind of looks like Terrence or Philip. Anyone from really from Canada. I guess really based on that, my mouth should also work the exact same way. Terrence and Philip. Hilarity ensues. In case also you were curious, not that it really does belong there, but you can kind of take one of the noses. Oh, let's just hope I don't drop it. You can take one of the noses, sort of wedge that in there. It kind of makes it look a little silly. It doesn't really belong there. In case anybody was going to throw that question out in the comments section, can you take the loose nose and put it into the nasal cavity of the mask? The answer to that is yes. It doesn't really fit in properly, mind you. But what you can do, though, is the goggles, is that the goggles do fit over top of his existing head, or at least this head. Be careful, though, while putting this across, just because it's very thin plastic. The few times I've already done this, I just feel, I fret the whole time, just because, again, like fitting this over top of his head, it goes, goes either over this head, or you can also display it on this head, which I guess really between the two, this one makes the most sense, just because it already has a nose, and again, part of his hair already sticking out. This one already having only just the nasal cavity and only the eye sockets, probably will not be a good idea to probably use it with the goggles. It's, you know, it's entirely up to you. We're gonna get back to those heads in a moment. The figure also comes included with a couple of gloved hands. The gloved hands are both a gripping hand and a more relaxed gestured hand. And then he also comes included with these hands as well, which I happen to be using at the beginning of this review. These hands, the wrapped hands, uh, it does have a gripping hand, like I said, for holding the book. So let's go back and bring back in the journal. If you wanted to, you could put the journal in between the thumbs and the finger. Just get the thumb actually around there. And if you want to maybe have it closer to the spine, the figure can hold the book with ease. With ease, upside down with ease. It's holding, going to hold it perfectly fine. And then the other hand, literally on the other hand, the figure also can hold the beaker, which again I did have at the beginning of this review. So it really has serviceable enough hands to really hold all the accessories he comes included with, even though really the accessories he only comes included with is the beaker and the book. Getting though a closer look though at the Invisible Man, this is the stock defaulted head as I tap away at his temple. This is the, what the defaulted head sculpt looks like when you get him first out of his tray. But again, you can then swap it out with the other, the other heads that we'll be looking at more in a moment. This one does already have the goggles. The goggles don't appear to be removable, nor is the nose. A nice bandaged face, though. You have the little peaked out areas of the, of the hair sticking out the top of his head. I like the way that this one's been sculpted quite a lot. It really isn't a lot of paint. I'm guessing they probably would have painted the head the way that it is. I can't imagine that they probably would have molded it in the bandaged colors. Because if you look at the upside down, it looks like it's just a little bit of a lighter shade than the color that we're looking at right now. So they probably would have hand painted or likely just factory painted, of course, the head sculpt and painted the goggles over top with the nose and then the hairs. A nice looking head sculpt. But though, if you did want to change it, it's just a case of popping the head off the ball joint. The first time I did do this, by the way, I went... It didn't actually make a popping noise, but when I first popped it out, I thought, where did the ball joint go? Until I realized it was way down in the in the collar area of his shoulders. And if you want to swap it out with this head sculpt, we're just going to pop this in place right now. Again, where we started, where we went to now. This one's okay. It's definitely not my favorite. Or if you want to have a little more of an interesting way of displaying the figure, that little Terrence and Philip head sculpt, uh, what you can do is, again, it's got a hole on the bottom of it. Just tuck it inside the collar, push it down just enough, and you got yourself part where his mouth is now visible, but because of course he's invisible, you can't even see where the rest of his face is. It's a really interesting way of displaying the figure. Although I will say, putting this down actually onto the ball joint, I would re request, I would probably suggest, suggest, not necessarily putting a lot of pressure on this. If you do put a lot of pressure where it gets lodged then onto the ball joint, trying to yank this off, you only have just a little lip of plastic right here, and you really wouldn't want this to tear. So, I mean, it's more than enough. It's serviceable enough just to tuck it in as far as I have it right now. Still easy enough to remove, but just tuck it enough that it stays in place, and then you don't have to worry about, again, breaking that plastic if possible. As for the rest of his outfit, he does have his jacket. The jacket, it seems like it probably would have been, based on, as you can see, the little crease line colors, a more lighter coloring of blue, and then they would have painted a darker blue over top of it. it as a handkerchief on the one side, a lighter blue tie on the inside, and you can see, like, in the movie, the jacket sits quite baggy on the figure's body. 
Coloring matches nicely there on the sleeve. And again, he's got himself the wrapped gloves there on either side. Changing out the hands, by the way. It's just a case of removing the hands from where they are right now. And then just take yourself, of course, the hands that you want to swap it out. And just pop those in place. I'm sure one of the other questions somebody probably was going to ask me is, we also had a look at the Jada Toys Invisible Man from Universal Monsters. And remember, the figure came included with this particular hand. Now, if anyone was going to be throwing out the question into the viewing audience as to whether you could use these hands, the answer is yes. Just take the hands and remove them from the forearms, even though these don't technically come included with the figure. Just pop these in place. And if you don't mind the fact that they're obviously a different color than the rest of the hands, you could technically use, just bend the hand here, you could technically use the one that we got from Jada Toys, even though really technically it was never included with this figure. So I, I, I like that. At least they're using a similar sized peg. Most of these figure hands tend to be using universal sized pegs. Let's just prop, pop the proper hands in place. And I guess really while we are removing one of them, I mean, for all, I mean, there's nothing really to say that you can't just leave one of the hands off anyways, as it, he is invisible after all. Just, it would look as, as if he basically has just an invisible hand. For the purpose, though, of posability, let's pop these hands back in place. And just before we actually get to that, I just want to show you guys what the legs look like. I feel like I've seen these legs from before. Possibly Jason Voorhees. Uh, I see a crease line right here. I just happen to have a Jason Voorhees off to the side. I had kind of inspected it earlier, and it doesn't seem to be the case that they're using the same legs. Or possibly they may have even used they're using the same legs for... Let's just grab Phantom of the Opera. I'm just curious. No, actually, if you look at the wrinkles there on the inside of his thighs, they're not the same wrinkle placement as the one we get here from the from the Phantom of the Opera. Obviously, the legs look like they're a little bit different from one another. They're pretty close, though, so they might have done a little bit of new tooling for that. Anyways, though, for the figure's articulation, do you want to stick with this head sculpt still? Okay. This head sculpt still works the same way on the ball joint. Just caution, cautionary when it comes to, of course, rotating the figure's head, because, of course, you don't want to start to twist the plastic. But the head works basically the same way. You know what? I'll just pop that off right now. Pop the other head sculpt in place. It's just going to be a lot easier to move the head up and down. So it does move up, it does move down, and you can move it back and forth as well. The figure does have a full rotation on the head. Uh, also, as well, I did want to mention, too, that the figure does have a ball joint right here. So at the top of the neck, there's a hinge joint. But at the bottom, because, of course, that's sitting on its own ball joint, it does have a ball joint at the base of the neck. So it's technically in two places. You'd lose a little of that, obviously, when you get to this head sculpt, just because, again, it's only really relying on the one ball joint. It's going to lose it up here where his open mouth would be. As for his arms, the arms do rotate all the way around, both sides. Arms hinge out. Now, I noticed, though, with the arms, when it comes to hinging them, they don't quite hinge fully at 90 degrees. Right here, it's telling me don't push it any further. So I would I would be willing to write off and say that it sits at around 45 degrees. If you can get a little higher than that, then you can get a little higher than that. But it does seem like there's definitely resistance happening right now. But again, it does rotate all the way around. The figure only has a single hinge in the elbow, but it allows at least the forearm to rotate back and forth. And the hands as well rotate all the way around. As for the Invisible Man's upper body, it is on a ball joint. And because, again, like this is softer plastic, it sort of does make him a little fuller in the abdomen area. But again, he still rotates all the way around on an abdomen, uh, abdomen ball joint. Legs do split out. They are in ratcheted joints once again. Legs go forward. Legs go back. There is a swivel at the top of the thigh. And the whole time I'm also doing as well, you notice and you probably hear for yourself an awful squeaking. It's just the, probably the plastic rubbing in on itself. This is also not a soft plastic, so it's just probably like plastic on plastic rubbing against one another. The figure does have a single hinge, again, only on the knee. It allows at least the lower leg to rotate. And the feet, once again, move up and down this way and back and forth, too. I did mention earlier that you could use technically the hand that came included with Jada Toys. Uh, speaking of Jada Toys, just in case somebody was curious, I don't tend to usually bring in, when it comes to comparisons, uh, toys from other figure companies. Just because, again, I like to keep like to like. If you are solely only just collecting NECA toys, then you're probably not going to be collecting any of the stuff from Jada Toys. But I did want to bring in at least the Jada Toys release of Invisible Man so you guys can see there's quite a size difference really between the two. Despite that, though, Jada Toys still seem to have a similar sized hand. And with that being the case, of course, because they're also using the same size pegs. If you wanted to, overlooking, of course, the fact that the colors are completely much brighter here on the Invisible Man from Jada Toys. Yeah, in fact, you could use the same hands and use them on this Invisible Man instead. 
The Invisible Man is one of those rare cases where actually losing the hand benefits the look of the figure. Now, you could even take it to the extreme of having the figure missing a head and missing a hands, but I don't think I want to push it that far of a dial. Instead, what I'd rather do is pull it back a bit. Probably have the figure, I think, displayed with one hand missing, and then have the partially bandaged face, which I think is a really neat thing that they included with this figure. It gives you the illusion of what he would look like invisible without completely removing the head altogether. Uh, as for the figure's accessories, we've already looked at the fact he comes only included with the journal and the beaker. I said it was a straw. It might have actually even been a stirring stick. But the figure also above that comes included with a pair of noses. Might be the only time, I probably even say myself saying this, but might be the only time we've ever gotten ourselves noses that come included with figures. And of course, for the obvious sizing of what those noses would be, very easy to lose. That one extra one, even though it really does have a tray slot in the figure packaging, I might just ultimately put it back into the bag with the other two noses. So at least I know those noses are in a safe place. Can you imagine we're even having this conversation? The figure also has a toupee, but all of these don't really have any purpose until really down the road. Let's hope, fingers crossed, NECA does release an accessory set for the Invisible Man. I mean, really, that Invisible Man accessory set could be getting a lot of mileage as they could also release it down the road for a Victor Frankenstein accessory set, just changing out some of the things that are on top of the table. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Have you had the chance to pick up the NECA's Universal Monster Invisible Man? And if you have, how do you have the figure displayed? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, hey, if you guys enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and and you'd like to stick around for more just because we are wrapping things up that joke doesn't just work for mummy alone just because we are wrapping things up now for the invisible man does not mean does not mean that NECA reviews are all done on this channel in fact we have a whole bunch of them actually coming your way so if you want to come back to this channel on a regular basis please do thank you as always guys thanks for watching see you guys next time